Good morning. Uh, you can say I'm in my pickup. I, I got my stitches out of my knee this morning and everything is looking really good with that. So that's enough about that. Anyway, today we look at chapter four of Second Timothy. And in this chapter, uh, you know, Paul is talking to Timothy and he says, I charge you therefore before God and the Jesus Christ, you know, preach the word. And, you know, that's that's the job of a pastor. Preach the word. Teach the, teach them about God. Teach them about Jesus as our Savior. To, to preach the word. And when I think about that preaching the word, it's, you know, uh, John 1 begins with, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word was God. And then verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So to preach the word is to preach Jesus. And... And just to encourage people in their faith and in their journey of faith and, and, and everything that goes on in their lives to, to preach Jesus, to, to preach the word and, and to uh, convince people, to rebuke people, to, he says, extort them with all long suffering and teaching, you know, and, uh, but to continue to speak the truth. And uh, I read a deal that says that, you know, in the, in the second letter to Timothy, Paul uses the word truth six times and in the first letter he wrote to Timothy he uses the word truth at least five times and you know and, and again in John 14 6 verse Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life so you know when he says here preach the word and Jesus says I am the word and I am the truth well, we speak the true word of Jesus and and in verse 3 uh, Paul has got some some warnings of, of what people are going to be like. He says, Time will come when people will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will leap for at false teachers, and they will turn their ways, eyes and ears away from the truth and be led by fables. And a fable is a story, you know, like Aesop's fables. You know, they are, they're made up. There's no, no truth to them. And... And uh, so Paul is just warning them and us, Timothy and us, about, about remaining in the truth and, and remaining true to Jesus' word and, and everything going on that, that way. And, and then Paul talks about, you know, that, you know, he's, he's being poured out. He's, he's looking and thinking that, you know, his life is coming to a close. His life is coming to an end. And then in verse 7, he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And I think all three of those are important. I fought the good fight. You know, he's continued to speak the word of truth about Jesus. He's, he's remained true to the course. He says, I've, I've finished the race. You know, I mean, you, you don't give up halfway through, you know, when even if you're, you know, if there are eight people running and you're eighth place, you know, run, finish the race, you know, and, and start what you finish. So Paul has done that. But also, importantly, I've kept the faith. He's remained firm in his conviction that Jesus is Lord and that uh, Jesus is the Savior and that God comes that way to us and through us. And then Paul talks about, uh, verses 9 through 16, he, he talks about people that had been a part of his faith, part of his journey in, in life, that have abandoned him, have turned away, have, have left, and and we all find that, you know, that, you know, some people, you know, sometimes friends move away and different things that way. But, but we have people in our lives that, that uh, turn away and go a different direction in their lives. And, and it hurts that way. And, and Paul is saying, you know, that there are people that have been important to me in the past. And all of a sudden now they're gone. And um, they have abandoned not only me, but they've abandoned their faith in Jesus. And just a warning that way about those things. And then he says to Timothy, uh, I really, really would like to see you. I hope you can come and visit me, you know, and you're, you're one of the faithful that way. And, and just, you know, to, he says, I long to see you, to, to encourage you and to just to, to rejoice with you, you know, in the Lord and everything that way. And uh, so Paul is appreciative that Timothy has stayed faithful and that Timothy has remained uh, convinced of, of what he was taught by his mother and his grandmother and what he's learned from Paul. And um, then Paul talks about, you know, he's, he talks about these people that have abandoned him in his faith journey and everything, but then he says, the Lord is faithful. And this is one of the 
the things that he ends up with in this uh, fourth chapter of Timothy, the, the conclusion of 2 Timothy, verse 18, he says, The Lord will deliver me from every evil work, and he will preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever. So even though some of our worldly friends, some of our worldly acquaintances, the people we know and trust and things here on earth, even though they abandon us, you know, God is faithful. And he said that, you know, just, I think we talked about it yesterday, you know, that, you know, that God is faithful, maybe a couple of days ago. But, you know, even when we're not faithful, God is. And, and Paul just um, speaks his his gratitude that in in all things that that God is faithful and, and true that way, and so he closes this letter with just you know some words of encouragement, some words of advice, some words of caution, and I think those are all good things for us too to to have the words of advice, um, to know that God is truth, to remain in the truth, some words of caution, to you know be aware of who we are, who we hang out with to be aware that there are people that um, will turn their backs on us that maybe won't be in our lives anymore. But most importantly, to remember that God is always faithful, that God is there. So on this day and always, enjoy God's blessings and just live a life of faith.